Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. This is a special series, special edition, episode three of Red Pill Tamales. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We have producer Rob. What's in up, the building, everybody? And we have Marisol today. Hey, what's up? She's ready to talk her shit. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit the notification bell on YouTube because YouTube is owned by Google and opinions like these tend to get suppressed, you know, shadow banned and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the left don't want the, you know, the, the, the educated Chicano talking that shit. That's a lot. But anyway, um, it, it'll really help us with the algorithm. Y'all know how the algorithm is. So, uh, Rob, expand on that. Why they need to hit the bell and show love and support. Because they're suppressing conservative type of talk. So it's not like Chingo's I'm a full blown conservative, but Man. at the same time, he is talking about things that are on the right side and big tech likes to suppress that. And it's a good time to follow Chingo on parlor mm -hmm. at Chingo bling one. Yeah. I might change the name cause I, it's a new and I didn't know how to sign up properly. <laughs> I think parlor Chingo bling one on uh, parlor. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to all my parlor fam. And if you want to follow me on parlor, I am at it's Marisol Herrera. What? Marisol got a parlor. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know Marisol had a parlor. She, she not following me on parlor. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we don't have to be friends for everything. Chingo. Hey, you know, I might stalk you on there, <laughs> but uh, before we get into all the subjects and things like that, I want to remind everybody about a thing called mind reading. I see it all the time. I posted a meme of the uh, Cash Me Outside girl. You know, she's from yeah. Florida, and uh, they're not doing no curfew over there. Shout out to Governor DeSantis. Anyway, the meme was, Governor says, stay in your home after 10 p.m., and then it says, me, and it has her little face from Dr. Phil. It's like, Cash Me Outside, how yeah. about that? And uh, I thought it was a funny meme, which basically what I was trying to express is I'm not, at this point in the game, at this point in 2020, I'm not 100% sold on governors and, and everybody trying to say that at 10 p.m. 1001 is when all the rona you know the rona comes out in right night. what 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 the rona comes out at night hey what, hey what? Uh, so i was just kind of clowning that whole concept that if you go to one state they want you in the house at 10 p.m you can't get your hair cut can't go to the gym you can't have a business so on and so forth but yet at, in another state it's wide open yet they both have cases and not to mention, Governor Newsom in California <clears throat> got caught out there having a little birthday dinner for his lobbyist friend, along with some of the heads of all the big hospital chains out there. And he got called out. They took a picture. He's like, <laughs> well, that was in an orange zone county. And, you know, it wasn't a red zone. Like, you know, da, 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 da. And he kind of tip danced. You know, we, we kind of cracked the door for, for a little bit. And I didn't know it was going to be that many people. Right. Anyway. Kids in, in California, they're not allowed to do uh, baseball, nothing like that. They have to drive to states like Texas just to be able to compete and play sports. So that's what the meme was about. But people in my comments are like, Chingo, this is so typical. You have no empathy over uh, people who are sick. And uh, Chingo, why don't you ask such and such if Corona is real or not? And Chingo, basically, they're mind reading. They're assuming that I think Corona's fake, which I don't. Obviously, I mean, people dying, uh, people getting sick, you know, whatever. And they just mind read. So don't be a mind reader. And if you're out there in, in the social media world and somebody's trying to misinterpret what you're saying, call them out and just let them know, like, hey, man, you can't read my inner thoughts. Like, don't assume that Chingo voted for Trump because he don't care about kids in cages and he just care about his taxes. And then the comments will be like, that sucks. You care more about the economy than you do people and so on and so forth. And that sucks that you're uh, these comments. When you call it the China virus, you being anti-Asian and Asian Americans are really getting threatened right now because it is. And it's like, bro, it came from China. Along with all that fentanyl that killed George Floyd and stuff like that. I mean, right. They doing it on purpose. But uh, but anyway. Don't it, be a mind reader. Yeah, right. There's a bunch of things that we're going to bring up in future episodes, like, because I've seen people like, what about the kids and DACA and Dreamers and stuff? And those big, big topics, I want to try to get somebody that can actually mm -hmm. be in here, or if you're willing to take it to their office even, we'll take it to an official, like an official's office and do it out of there and talk mm -hmm. about everything from the timelines of Clinton way before Obama and then Trump and how this all came to be and the mess that it is right now, or at least the media is making it out to be. That way, it's not just us on the mics covering bullet points that people could go and Google themselves. And because I've seen a lot of people, especially when it comes to that topic. Can I read something real quick, guys? Yeah. Um, in regards to the DACA thing, okay? Um, so just check this out, guys. And 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 like and and like Rob says, 
Well, I don't even want to say fact check it because now there's people out there who fact check for Democrats. Well, and yeah, so Twitter, that other, Twitter so, has fact checkers. Um, yeah. So, um, quote, unquote, quote, yeah, quote. I just want to read this. And then, you know, before anybody attacks, before anybody just starts to assume you don't know something, do your, you read yourself yeah. and then figure out if this what I'm saying is correct or in, incorrect. But this is what I did. Right. So Democrats are not for dreamers. OK, here we go. DACA recipients were offered amnesty with a path to citizenship on three separate occasions during the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. Are we clear here so far? Okay. In 2018, Kamala Harris was one of only three Democrats, Democrats, did you hear that? (laughs) Democrats, excuse me, to oppose a compromise that would have given Trump administration 25 billion for a border wall and enhance security in exchange for a path to citizenship for dreamers. You following me so far? Mm-hmm. So there was a $25 billion thing that Kamala and a couple other senators, uh, what rejected? Yes, because he wanted to be able to build the border. Yeah, wall. He wanted funding for a wall and, and in uh, exchange border control. to an exchange to allow the DACA uh, the dreamers to be able to beca- get amnesty. Okay. okay. So it was going to be a negotiation. Yeah. Right. Trade. So here we go. It would have included not just the roughly 700,000 dreamers, but an additional, not just the dreamers. All right. Mm-hmm. We got it. Mm-hmm. 1.1 million illegal immigrants who could have qualified, but have not yet applied. So in addition to the dreamers, we were also going to allow 1.1 million illegal immigrants to apply, even those who have not. Mm -hmm. All right. Kamala said, and I'm just going to let y'all hear what she said. This was her reason why whenever. When the negotiation landed in and around a wall in exchange for DACA. And it was give us this one time payment and we will give you uh, DACA in exchange. You were one of the three senators, I think, who voted against that. Yes. Some would say, um, Senator Harris, why why wouldn't you give Trump his wall in exchange for all of these people to receive the DACA and, and to stay in the United States? Because I did not agree with holding these kids ransom. And that's what that was. Moving on. She's a terrible debater, by the way. The King Rounds proposal would have allowed immigrants who earned the U.S. I'm sorry, who entered the U.S. before they turned 18 and before June 15, 2012, and who were younger than 39 as of June 15, 2012, to apply for legal status. Do you understand how many people that is? So basically, a lot of people had a path to citizenship, but... um, you know, it was a negotiation and it came in exchange with a $25 billion price tag to reinforce um, security on the border. But Kamala was one of the people that said, nah, cuz we're not trying to meet you halfway and give all these people a path. to." S-. So basically she shot down a chance for DACA to go through all because they didn't want to fortify the border wall where fentanyl get, comes through all kind of cartel activity, coyote, uh, women getting raped in exchange for payment to be crossed, children getting trafficked, recycled, and quote-unquote rented uh, as like little um, props to like, hey, this is my kid. And the kid's like, no, I ain't. Exactly. Well, now, excuse me, that's what she said on air. Mm-hmm. But what she technically really put out when it, this was like the negotiation going on, she said, while this bill would put dreamers on a pathway towards citizenship, the appropriation of $25 billion for a border wall is a waste of taxpayer money. A wall will not secure our border, and I remain concerned those billions of dollars may also be used to implement this administration's anti-immigrant agenda, one that targets California and its residents. Mm. Well, uh, you know, as a senator and looking at, I'm not sure what her... I'm, I'm about oh, to go tell ahead, you. go, 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 go. Kamala Harris's no vote caused great controversy amongst Democrats as it was the closest closest by by bipartisan bill bipartisan, bipartisan, excuse me, to built giving dreamers a path to citizenship. Mm -hmm. So basically Trump tried. Exactly. And she said as senators announced their vote on the on the plan, the potential 2020 presidential candidate and minority leader Chuck Schumer 
spoke tensely on the Senate floor. Harris then departed to the Democratic clo uh, cloakroom. A few minutes later, she emerged and announced her no vote to audible gasps. So basically, other people were like, Bitch. wait, what? No, this is a great thing. Why would you have said no to it? No, no, no. Know? La contra Trump. Whatever Trump, if Trump says, you know, A, they're like, nah, we like B. So then in June 2017, the Trump administration proposed to exchange citizenship, okay, for at least 800,000 DACA illegals and their parents, all right, plus immediate relatives in exchange for a border wall immigration reform and additional funding to detain detention no. detention facilities what it, the hell's wrong look, with me doing? you know there's a hard work out today okay. english okay. english ain't her first language <laughs> 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 house democrats rejected the bill again all right that's that's twice so now. basically the democrats keep rejecting okay. the stuff then in september 2017 again guys at the criticism of fellow Republicans, the Trump administration sat with Democrats to offer quick amnesty for 800,000 DACA recipients in exchange for tax cuts and border funding. Democrats cannot come to the deal that included border security. You got to remember the left. There is no meeting in the middle when they're very open about no borders. They want open borders. You know, it, you, it's hard to want to try to meet them in the middle anywhere when you know that it's kind of where their standpoint is. I don't get okay. it though. Like here's the thing. <sighs> and, and I think this is with both parties guys, mm -hmm. not just, sure. not just Republicans or Democrats at the end, at the end, this is all about power. Sure. No one is. Re I, I, and, and listen guys, before anybody says, Oh, you, you're a racist because you voted for Trump, et cetera. What no one understands is that this is, I've never voted this way. This is my first time. It is time. my first time too. This yeah. is my first time. You, even so, though people like to say, oh, this time he's been a closet Republican. They love yes. saying that. So that's what makes readers. me angry that yeah. guess what guys, during this lockdown, this quarantine that happened, I don't know if it did me good or bad, but it made me start to get very curious about certain shit that was happening that I found odd. And even when Chingo would tell me stuff, I'd be like, let me figure it out on my own. I don't want to be influenced by even when you're in the same household, you're, you're influenced by sometimes by your spouse, your girlfriend, whoever it is that you live with. For sometimes sure. these conversations, the news, the news, social media. So I, I would even tell him, I'd, I'd tell him, I'm like, I get, that's cool. Let me, let me look it up for myself. I want to make my decision on my own, not because this was, 100%. Rotten, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's guys. So put your, put your, whatever you feel about Trump aside and just look up what he's done. That's why we have to address the hoaxes because there's been a four year narrative that he's a Russian spy. There's a P tape. Uh, he said, fuck soldiers, veterans. He said, uh, he said Nazis are good people. He told you to drink bleach. You have to take all that hoax into consideration because people, this is how simple a lot of my people are. It's just like Jorge Ramos said, Univision said, uh, all I know is he's a Hitler, he's an orange man bad, and DACA, dreamers, and kids in cages. And that's it. They don't go deeper like what mm -hmm. Rob was saying about during all this negotiation you just discussed. People aren't ready to take a serious look. I mean, this is coming from Mr. They Can't Deport Us All, right? If I'm willing to sit here and tell you, I'm still about that they can't deport us all. I'm, I don't like when Latinos are used as a scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? I feel like immigrants bring a lot to this country. But I also believe that Trump tiene chingo de razón. And there's, there's a lot of people on the right that will argue that, hey, look, there was a wall already before him. What he's trying to do, and, and you know, this is my, my interpretation, is that there's a lot of drugs, dope, fentanyl. The fentanyl comes from China, then it goes through the cartels, then it comes up through the border. Um, there, there's human trafficking, sex trafficking, you know, human smuggling. Um, there's just a real issue with these poor little Central American kids being utilized as a tool to sneak people across. And really, when you keep the border loose like that, you're just really putting more money in the cartel's hands because you got to pay coyotes. The coyote game is controlled by the cartels. The cartels are terrorizing 
your primos and your tias and small business owners, they're, they're extorting people in Mexico. So by you being over here saying, fuck trompas, pinche pelo de elotes, fucking keep the border open, homie, we're rolling with Pelosi. When you do all that, you're fortifying the pockets of the cartels. They're terrorizing Mexican citizens. They're in cahoots with the Mexican government. And people are getting, uh, what's the word? Um, people are just getting violated through this process of, of being smuggled in and, you know, I know he didn't call all of us rapists, but yeah. if there's rapists here, then you know there's rapists over there. For so sure. you can't just... I mean, we have rapists that are American citizens. That's, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's yeah. like, you can't be naive and tell me that the rest of the world is good. And there's no telling what else besides the fentanyl and all that. There's no telling what else might be funneling through. I know it might sound extreme that like, nah, man, if you a terrorist, bro, do terrorists really come through the Mexico border? I don't know. I'm not a U.S. Border Patrol. But my, my open-mindedness and my stance has definitely evolved because I'm 41. I have a family. I have kids. And like Marisol said, I noticed a whole lot of fuck shit throughout this year. You know, I've been on the left my whole life. You know, I'm always like, you know, yeah, man, everything's, you know, cool. And those stupid Republicans are closed-minded and they're too conservative and this and that. But it's kind of like, man, when you're looking at Antifa, when you're looking at the threat China has, when you're looking at all the news that's getting suppressed by Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the mainstream media, they'll sweep some shit under the rug. And that's really extremely dangerous. When you start suppressing free speech and all that stuff, um, it, it just becomes a lot more nuanced. And it's not really just, you voted for Trump, that's a vote against raza. But Biden is for la raza. You, sound, a, you need to sit at the kids' table with that opinion. Another thing is... If you haven't traveled to other third world countries or just in general, I'm not sure if you know this, but if you move to another country, they're not going to give you citizenship just because you decided to move to that yeah, country. Yeah, now you get in trouble. You're yeah, not Germany, going to. You're, you're not going to be no legal. You're in Germany, not going to be bro. no leg, legal. You're not going to get the benefits. So. Mexico's the, got the same thing. If, if an American oh, goes there. Oh, if you oh Honduran, if you Honduran and you in Mexico, pff, I, man, good luck, bro. They treat you so bad. Worse. But here's the thing. Because in America, it's the greatest country in the world. That's why everyone wants to We the baddest bitch the everybody, world's ever known. Yeah. America's the baddest bitch. Everybody wants to fuck her. People mm -hmm. in other countries and they're fucking watch real hard what right we now. do they so drool. that they can copy what we do, right? To implement it in their country, right? But... What people don't understand is, is that we're the only country that allows this kind of stuff where immigrants can be here and we're not hunting them down. You know, in Germany, you cannot even just if you're you're definitely working under the table. Uh, it's not just you marry a, a, a German citizen sh is, and then you become it's like we need documentation. Like how long have you been married? Uh, why did she come here? Or, uh, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that are so they're so strict. It's no one realizes it that. You just can't go into any country yeah. and become legal. And I get it, guys. My parents came here as well. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not like we don't have empathy. We, we don't. I, I don't feel it. But if you think about it, if you just kind of put your mind, think about the process. Now, for example, uh, like Chingo said, a lot of the women that are brought here, trafficked and sold for sex, how do you think they came here? They start off in El Paso. They're Juarez. Across from Juarez. Mm. Some, That's of them a border are, some of there. them were already sex workers in Juarez. It just so, depends. So, you know what I'm saying? So, little stuff like that, it's like, let's look at the big picture. I get what you're saying. It makes total sense. You know what I'm saying? Thankfully, my parents didn't have to cross no river. They didn't have to use a coyote. You know, my parents came here in the 70s. It was a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So, it wasn't like things are right now. Obviously, like, it's a little bit harder for those coming in right now. And my parents, had, you know, came here when, there was, when amnesty happened. So, they... Thankfully, my grandfather was already here, so it allowed my dad and the rest of my family to also gain the benefit of amnesty, really. You know, really, any Im immigrant yeah. that was here. So, with that being said, you really have to understand the way immigration works. You really have to understand how the Border Patrol works. You really have to understand what it causes our country. What it, what, guys, we are pay everybody that says we need to have free this, it's not free. Yeah. People who who have even you don't have to make four hundred thousand dollars, even those that make forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, fifty thousand dollars that pay taxes. Well, your taxes have to be used for these free 
things that other people get. And guess what? If you were to get laid off and you needed food stamps, you don't qualify. And this is your tax tax money that you've been paying so others can receive this help. Yeah. But you yourself, should you find yourself in a crisis, you can't even qualify for that. So anytime somebody tries to, uh, what's the word, persuade you with a certain thing, like for example, oh, I'm gonna, it's gonna be free college, Rob. Right. Oh man, we're gonna have free healthcare. Hey, you know what? Free this, free that, free this. If they never tell you the price that's associated with it, if they never factor in like personal accountability and personal responsibility, if that's never really part of this package deal that they're presenting you, beware, beware, beware that if they're not factoring in, man, at what cost? Or what are the long-term repercussions of this, that, and a third? Beware, because that means they're not giving you the full story. What Mighty Soul was saying about, hey, look at other countries. Look at other countries' free speech. Look at how other countries treat their immigrants. Another thing to consider is this. If you're in China and you want to own some real estate, it's not going to be years, 20 years down the road. Why do you think so many Chinese national, uh, nationals are coming to North America? They're buying up Toronto. They're buying up all this real estate. So all the youngsters that are listening, you, if you don't own real estate yet, you're probably going to want to buy a house or something at some point. And you're going to be up against... Chinese people, which, you know, I love I love all, all Americans. I don't give a damn, you Korean American, Chinese American. What I'm talking about is Chinese nationals who are sending their kids over here uh, to univer American universities, and they're coming over here and they're buying up all the real estate. It's because in their communist uh, regime, their communist country, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to own no property. So be grateful and protect what we have and don't fall for the okie doke and don't roll out the red carpet for socialism and communism and neo-Marxism and, and all this other stuff. That was another thing I wrote down too, school prices, uh, which, I mean, again, the episode's everywhere, which I like. You're hitting on all the bullet points. You know what I'm saying. But eventually, we're going to get others that can speak on these specific yeah. topics. And more in depth. And to go deep. Super in depth. Yeah, go exactly. Because so, with the immigration thing, to go back to that real quick, is there's, and I was talking to Chingo about this before you walked in, there's a, there's a timeline that needs to be uh, investigated or needs to be talked about in depth. That goes way back to Clinton, right? Immigration has always been a problem in the United States, way from, you know, 90s, 80s before. But Clinton made a really big dent in it with some things that maybe would have been considered unlawful now. And Obama, same thing. Executive orders that maybe were a little unconstitutional. Uh, and then you got Trump. And now here we are today. Right. In in between 96 and 2016, there's a lot of shit that is misunderstood or underreported. Right. And then to school, the cost of school is way too much. Right. You would agree with that? School costs way for too college? much. Yeah, oh. for, for college? Yeah. I had to come home because my parents couldn't afford it anymore. So I was going to Texas A&M my first year. You mentioned that, Chingo. And, and we talk about stuff like kids not being able to afford school and, and Bernie saying, you know, just forgive all loans or whatever. But that doesn't really get to the root of the problem is why governments are subsidizing these high prices, right? It doesn't give the schools an incentive to drop the price of the school. And two, when the kids are done and let's say that everything is paid for, the, the school will then go, Gotcha. I charge this motherfucker 50. How much more can I charge the next to crop get, of kids? To get brainwashed and well, to get a shit that, degree. Well, something that Aruba does is, um, so college is free, but after you graduate, how you pay back is you have to work in Aruba. You can't graduate. I heard that. Get your yeah. degree and then come, come to the U.S. or come somewhere else to make money. No, boo. You finna pay me back. You're going to work here. Because I contribute. need my smart, and I, I just paid for your college, yeah. so you need to contribute what you learned back into our country. Now let's 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 see if it's apples and oranges, though. I would argue that there's more incentive for, let's just say, a China to influence universities or professors via certain grants and or money and things like that. So that these kids that are getting these liberal arts degrees are getting indoctrinated with these sociology classes and all that. They're getting indoctrinated and brainwashed. Aruba being Why you got to talk about the liberal arts degree? <laughs> well, I <laughs> don't know. I, I mean, that might be one. <laughs> well, I'm going to dig deeper into that too, right? But I don't want to cut you off. So check this out. Do you think China is worried about... So here's, here's what I'm trying to say. The education in Aruba, you probably can't compare to an education in America. Why? Because China probably ain't worried about influencing Aruba. Mm -hmm. Arubians, you know what I'm saying? That's probably, they're like, no, America's the baddest bitch. We need to destabilize them. We need to make them uh, 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 just against each other. We, mean it, we need to make the old versus the young, the rich versus the poor, the black versus the white, the light brown versus the 
dark brown and uh, genders. You got that light skin privilege thing, you know that white Tino. They, they, I've never heard of that in my entire life, yo. Yeah, don't don't that's even insane. don't even get me on a tangent. <laughs> so so that's one thing, right? Do you think that China is worried about Aruba? No, America's yeah, right. the baddest bitch. So they're gonna put all their resources to destabilize us and make us, uh, 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 you know, maybe just not care about God as much. Maybe we're looking at a little Vogue magazine here and there. Maybe we thinking Antifa's good because they got a cool name and we really believe in what the news is telling us because America's the baddest bitch. We under attack. When we get locked down, we fucking over the greatest economy that ever lived prior to COVID, right? Um, another thing is this. I saw this really cool meme where it had uh, a female on the left side holding up her little cardboard sign and a dude on the right side holding up his little p- piece of paper sign, right? And hers said, um, I'm in debt X amount of thousands of dollars. I have my liberal arts degree. I can't get a job. Uh, so on and so forth. I'm the 99%. Basically, like, I'm oppressed because America is just evil to the core. And it's it's she's a white girl. But it's like, it's the white man's fault <laughs> that here I am in debt and I can't get my money back for this bullshit degree. Now, the other guy... <laughs> Hold no, on. keep going. No, no, I going. thought my soul was going to hit me. I, I did too. That's why I laughed. Um, I could remember I became Chingo Bling because my degree didn't get me shit. But anyway, the guy on the right of the meme, he's holding up his sign and it says, I got, I went to a trade school. I learned how to do a useful thing. I make X amount of money. I have zero fucking college debt because that shit wasn't as expensive as the bull crap that they sold you. Mm-hmm. And, and and I can't remember if he said I'm the 1% or I'm the 99%. Mm. But the point is this. If we're going to do a scholarship or something this year, we might want to consider doing it for trade school people. I just mm-hmm. had this conversation with a group of friends as well because I a lot of them you know, grew up small town. None of them, went to, none of them really pursued a four-year degree except one who's a lawyer. Uh, the rest of them... Electrician, plumber. I know more millionaire electricians and plumbers and general you know, and contractors. Went to trade school. They went to trade school, uh, diesel techs, all this kind of stuff than anybody else. Honestly, I know my like one dentist, one lawyer. Yeah, I got a dude. I got a bullshit marketing degree. And like, <laughs> I wish I knew electrical or right. plumbing or or construct something like that. Well, you, you can't say it was bullshit because it's still it, because of those things that you learned, Pete. You were able to navigate your you know your career because it was the the marketing stuff that you understood which helped you put this chingo bling persona I, I, out. i'd argue a lot of that was innate that's i mean yeah. that I can mean, be understood yeah, and i guess the just, price tag too though if you, yeah. if you let's say you put a, a six-figure price tag on that degree you know versus somebody who just kind of put their nose to the yeah. ground and started working and especially if you compare it to somebody that knows a trade right I mean, you're able to, you're in demand. Right. You can probably already start your company. You have your license and stuff. And, and you're probably working all the time. And you're probably charging well. Yeah. And you're making money. And there's paths in those uh, traditions, right? Like there's journeymanship and there's a, there's a way to get, yeah, exactly. Where they're at, whether you're, or when you have a liberal arts degree, let's just say that you're kind of just throwing shit at the wall, see what sticks. Which don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of that too, because I want to figure it out, right? But it's not the same. Well, unfortunately, my degree had to be under that because they didn't know they didn't know where to put the sign language department under. They should have put you under a trade. So they didn't. Uh, it used to be. Oh yeah. It used to be, but because too many deaf people became educated, you had to be at their same level because there were deaf individuals going to school to be lawyers, doctors, teachers. The more you know. So I had no idea. You were having to be required to not just know the language, but also you know, be vocabulary wise, everything you need to be. It was like, wait, if you're only in it, they saw as an interpreter, as you're just a trade. We're going to a four year college. You need to be at the same gotcha. level as us. Okay. So it used to be, yes, you actually used to be able to get grandfathered in. So let's say I was a coda, which is a child of a deaf adult, which let's just say my parents were deaf. I'm the child that was born from them. I would have been able just to go take the test, the state exam and immediately become an interpreter. When I was going to school, there were teachers or, or, or teachers' aides who had been teachers' aides for like 20 years, right, who were interpreters also. But because they didn't have a degree, they were making them come back to school. Granted, school was paying for them to go, but they were having to come back. Damn. 
just because of that. So, uh, you know, there's certain things that, you know, because of it, which I understand. But I, I really want to go back to this DACA thing because sure. um, they, here's what happened during. So we left off where I told you guys that um, uh, she said no, even the second mm-hmm. time around that they offered it. Right. Right. So then Trump made multiple statements. Of course, y'all know where Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Support for dreamers and offering them amnesty. And he said. Does anybody really want to throw out good, educated, and accomplished young people who have jobs? Some serving in the military, really? Because, again, they were fighting and saying no to it, right? They have been in our country for many years through no fault of their own, brought in by parents at young age, plus big border security, right? Okay. Some major issues with DACA. All right, here we go. Offers no path to citizenship. Current. This is currently okay. Mm-hmm. Dreamers are in limbo on if they will be deported, even though some were brought to the U.S. as infants. Created unconstitutionally through the executive order, Obama himself stated he could not bypass Congress, and the protections were only temporary. Yeah, and that's the executive order you're talking about. Like, there's three branches of government. There's, a, there's again, a system, right? Judicial, legislative, executive. He said, fuck everybody else. I'm just going to sign it in a law, which was deemed unconstitutional. And then here we go with speaking of that. Contributed to the surge of children being trafficked through the borders. The number of minors apprehended from the central border was 3.5 times higher in 2012 when DACA was created. Goddamn. Guys, do I need to read that again? <laughs> 3.5 higher. My goodness. Poor children. I, I Too bad we can't show this, but this is a data. Read it again, boo-boo. <laughs> no, for real. What happened? 3.5 what? So the number of minors apprehended from the central border was 3.5 times higher in 2012 when DACA was created. All right. Data of tra- trafficked children during DACA implementation and extension. Guys, if y'all saw this graph, I wish we could show this graph. Well, but YouTube, look at this. Are, yeah. Uh, you want to p- kind of put it on there? Just show it to the camera. Baby. Yeah. Is it sh- yep. Can you show That's it? perfect. Yeah. yeah. And send it to me and I'll post it. I'll make okay. a clip of it while we're talking about it. And then some benefits of a border wall. So let's just talk about this. Tim Ballard of Our Rescue stated a border wall would significantly reduce human trafficking because more traffickers would be forced to use a legal entry port where missing and exploited children have been rescued. Strong borders will, I'm sorry, uh, decentivize, oh, I'm sorry, strong borders will decentivize illegal immigration where many immigrants are met with violence. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a rough, yeah, it's a rough path. Statistics show eighty percent of Central American women are sexually assaulted crossing the border. Eighty yeah. percent, guys, and listen to that due, damn and number. And that's due to weak border, border security. security. Exactly. So basically, when you're for open borders, you're really putting these people in a path to be violated and victimized. So it sounds pretty. Right. It sounds pretty like open it all up. You know, America's the baddest bitch. You know, drop her draws. You know, no security. She ain't got no chastity belt. Just then, man, you really you're really affecting kids. So it's all in how you frame it and how you spin it, because imagine if the mainstream media was on Trump's side, how easy would it be for them to vilify Democrats, which you'll never see this. Right. You'll never see the mainstream media do this. But imagine if they spun it the other way. If we were living in an upside down world, they'd be like. The Democrats are pro uh, women and kids getting violated and raped and and fucked over when they get brought over here. The Democrats are pro cartels. The Democrats are pro crime. Uh, This open border is really dangerous and and there has a lot of really negative repercussions. But no, you never hear that side. It's always just Trump told you to drink bleach. That's all you need to know. He said Nazis were cool and he he don't like DACA. When you say uh, we're talking about, you know, open borders, right, for the left, they're very pro that, very open to that. They're also open to not uh, sending back somebody who was here illegally, who's been here illegally, and is caught doing a crime. They're still like, no, 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 keep them here. Don't send them they back. Just keep them. Yeah. yeah. It's like Which a is catch like, and release thing. Right. Or, yeah. Oh, that was, it came up in the debates. Uh, if And fact check me, Rob, but I think what you're referencing has to do with um, Trump in the debate. Trump was telling Biden, 
you know, they do catch and release and, you know, they got to be really dumb to come back to their court hearing, right? That they just kind of let them wait around and just, uh, just be out in the public and shit after they committed some kind of crime and they're illegal. And we're just going to hope that they come to their uh, court hearing, right? That is definitely one of the things, yeah. And I remember him saying that in the, in the debate and everybody clowned him because they were like, did you just hear Trump said that he just called, He's because he said some, oh, maybe some with the low IQ might come back for their hearing. He's like, he just called immigrants dumb. Right, I do remember that. And, actually, then, he said, and that then he said, and then he said, uh, you know, they, these kids, they were like, well, you lost 525 kids. He's like, well, a lot of them, didn't come here with parents. They came with coyotes. And then they're like coyotes. And then they're, all the people on Twitter were like, oh, my God, really? Really? Coyotes? There's animals now, Trump? First you tell us to drink bleach. Now you're telling us animals are sneaking immigrant children across. But uh, while we're on the subject, uh, real quick, I just want to show you all this thing, see if you can fact check it. So I put this on my story on Instagram. Follow me, real chingle bling. I said, bro, can somebody fact check this? And free the kids, right? Because y'all motherfuckers be mind readers and thinking I don't care about kids in cages. And it says, it's from Business Insider. Uh, the date is June 16th, 2014. And it says, sickening photos of the humanitarian crisis at the U.S. border detention centers. And you see a whole bunch of kids locked up in a cage in 2014. So somebody fact check that. Then the next photo, I said, somebody please fact check this and free the kids in case you think I'm not pro kids. And it says children in cages. You see them back there. And then you see Obama Department Head, uh, Department of Homeland Security, Secretary Je Johnson. And he's walking with some uh, people in suits and some Border Patrol people right by the kids locked up. So we already know Obama and Biden are the ones that built the cages. Apparently, they also had people in the cages. And some would even argue that the caravans was a George Soros thing. That might be too conspiracy. Yeah, right. That it was a George Soros thing where they were basically trying to humiliate Trump. And it was a chess move. They were using these people as pawns. So they kind of persuaded folks, maybe gave them an incentive and said, look, we need to bum rush the show. We need to come with as many people as possible. And we're just going to flood through the gate. And then we're going to see what they do. And supposedly it was a chess move to, to force Trump to put people in cages and all that. Yeah. Just to make them look bad. Yeah. Mm. The cages they built had ready for them. Uh, but they're going to argue and say that Trump was the one that separated the children from the parents. Even though a Even lot of them didn't Obama come with parents. Even though Obama and Biden were the ones who set this cages. all up, there's going to still be people that argue with you and say that it was Trump's fault who separated the children. First of all, nobody even knew who's, who was whose parents. But, yeah. but, but, because but, they were already separated, guys. But Jorge, Jorge and, Ramos and you know what? Said, this is what makes me so mad. In, let me, let me tell, don't get me started with Jorge Ramos. But John Leguizamo said. Don't get me started. People with love bringing up uh, John and, uh, and George Lopez. I had no idea, honestly, that they were that well, vocal about this their shit because I don't follow them. I'm, uh, let me interrupt my wife real quick. Yeah, sorry, so. You guys. Um. I think it's really cool that George Lopez gets to tell you who he thinks you should vote for. I think it's really awesome that he has freedom of speech and he can be vocal and support whatever candidate he wants. Uh, but the minute you go in the other direction, you're a sellout, vendido, coconut, that you're don't do shit, that you don't believe in COVID and you call it the China virus and you don't care about kids in cages. But it's really cool that George Lopez gets to but tell I you But I do who invite people to, to maybe, and, and I'm not promoting this or in any way or form guys but if you've not yet maybe look into the lexit movement l-e-x-i-t um and look that up and see if maybe you agree with any of the things that they post because i never really knew that i was as conservative as i was because i feel like i still in a, am a very socially liberal so, yeah like i'm a liberal in some ways still because again i don't care if you want to marry a male yeah if that's what makes you happy, that's what makes you happy. If you're going to marry a female, that's, you know what I'm saying? Who am I to tell you? Listen, I know that a lot of the conservative Republicans are like, it's biblical. It's not in the Bible. I know, but you ain't God. And so that's right. something, if it is wrong, What right? about late term abortion, my soul? Well, that's another thing. So when people were, were, were you know, were, <laughs> whatever, I don't even, whenever they were sending me their little messages, right? How dare you vote? And Coconut. I used to like you and Bendida. I don't like you anymore. Malinche. And I'm like, that's okay because you turn you know your what? back on your raza. 
I never, I never was, I never talked about politics. Yeah. I never told, so it, it's, I kind of felt like, so if I tell you what religion I am, are you going to stop liking me too? Because I'm not Catholic, which right. is the majority what a lot of right. Mexicans are. I'm not Catholic. So are you going to hate me for that too? I mean, there's a lot of things that I, I, I can't help, but that's what I was raised. The funny part though, is that my mom has always voted Republican and she and I would argue. I was telling him about it. <laughs> we would argue because I'd be like, how dare you think that way? You can't yeah, came here yeah. as an immigrant also. I you know what you. I'm saying? You sounded and like the people in my comments. Yeah. And you so hypocrite. I would ask her the same thing and she would try to explain it to me. And I wouldn't see the big picture. Well, now when I have conversations with my mom, it's funny because she's like, I've been telling you. I've been telling you. <laughs> Do you not see this? Yeah. So technically, I, I was really raised very conservative. Well, yeah, not, you, you were brought up in the church. I was brought up you in the church. A I am a, peacher, a preacher's child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I am. I am a PK. You know what I'm saying? So the crazy thing is I never really realized it because I still feel like, you know what I'm saying? I don't. Com I don't completely agree with everything on the right and I don't sure. agree with everything on the left. Yeah. I'm in the middle. Yeah, but this time around, the <clears throat> left didn't do nothing for me. Yeah. This man and that woman, first of all, I can't stand no damn two-faced MFs. And Kamala Harris, you sat there and, and threw out dirt about Biden. You called him out oh, during the too. debate. Dude, you man, called too. him out. And Arrasis. now y'all are booty buddies. Get the F out of here with that. I can't out. stand that shit. You, he should have found him a, and him too. That, that's why I know it was all planned. That's why. That's when I saw it. I was like, wait, y'all couldn't stand each other. And I get it. People are going to say it's debates. That's what it's supposed to be. I know. But she called Biden out on his truths. Yeah. Like it, all the shit all that he had been, that he had done wrong. So did, uh, uh, what was his name? Senator Booker. He was like, in my community, we say it like this. Biden, you all have been the Kool-Aid. Don't know the flavor. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh. And, and Biden's like, you know, he does his little empathy face. Yeah. He's had 47 years of practice. And he just sits there and takes it. Come on, but, man. Come on, man. When it was 20 people up on that stage, Beto O'Rourke, well, I don't even think they let Tulsi up on the stage. I can't remember. But yeah, Elizabeth Warren. You had a booty. What's the name? Uh, Mayor Pete. Uh, Andrew Yang. You had all these people. Uh, Bernie. Bernie. All these people up there. And they were going at it. It was like a, <clears throat> a, a circular firing squad. And everybody was calling each other out. Bitch, you ain't shit. Bah. Bitch, fuck your plan. Bah. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm saying. You know what? Now, maybe if Biden would have picked somebody else to be his his sidekick, his VP, his VP yeah. I might have probably said, OK, well, there might be a little chance of, OK, if he would have gone with Tulsi. Tulsi? So, oh, Tulsi okay. would have. She would have sunk he, everybody's ship, though. If he would have gone with Tulsi, they probably would have. They would have gotten my vote because I was all for Tulsi. I was like, yes, finally, we have a. A, a Democrat Hypocrites. that see things she, she that are, a, are being, yes, yes, she was a yes, female, yes, yes. She was a female. Female of color. She knew color. what she was talking about. Served she the military. really understood. Served the military, yeah. and she served the military. I mean, it was all great things. But you chose Kamala. I'll tell you why. The so person that's put the most people in black, African-American people in jail. That's who you chose? I'll tell you why. Talk mm. your shit, money soul. Man, I'll tell you on. why. All right, why, Jingo? Because identity politics, if you were a male, you weren't. Uh, you already weren't under consideration for the job. If you were a white male, you really weren't. You already don't even apply. From the jump, when you play that game that the left is playing, it's easy to see why they went with a black female. That's what they wanted. Because when it comes okay, to the... but now she's black? She's black. She was well, now she's black, yeah. She's, now you put Timberlands on her and, and you got to pronounce her name a certain way. But I... I I've seen Indian Americans on YouTube that are like, uh, bitch, you ain't representing for the Indians <laughs> like you need to be. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden. So, you know, she tries to uh, 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 embody the uh, the plight uh, of uh, black America. But in, in essence, she kind of doesn't really fit the mold. Uh, I know she went to like a HBCU and all, but, you know, she's really son of, Jam I mean, daughter of a Jamaican immigrant. So she, anybody that knows anything about the black community, Caribbean, mm -hmm. black folk, and African Americans. There's tension there. Since I was in high school, mm -hmm. my, my friend Jason's mom, Miss Debbie, the lady I mentioned on the last episode, she would she would tell Jason, she'd be like, mm, well, you know them Jamaicans think they better than us. And I'm like, what am I witnessing? It's like some black on black type stuff. Cause yeah. she was basically saying they think they're better because they're immigrants and they're not African American and there's like this whole thing with like competition with like well we get better grades or they study harder or whatever, 
But anyway, my point is this. How corny is it that instead of trying to pick the best person for the job, you're already look, you're already saying from the jump it's going to be a black female because that's the game that they're playing. They're playing this like identity. They've trained us all to view the world through the lens of race. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're playing the uh, oppression Olympics, who beats a black female? Right? Right. Just like a Latina lesbian is more oppressed than a Latino male. Even though we're both technically oppressed, I somehow have more privilege, according to critical theory. But uh, it's all bullshit. And so and and, and uh, you know, I don't even know why Biden got the the spot. I mean, they had Andrew Yang. And, and you know what? And in, in four years, if there's a great Democrat president, that's let's just say Tulsi is running yeah. in the next four years, then that's the way I'm gonna vote. What people don't understand is I don't vote if I'm Democrat or Republican. I vote based on what. And, and you know what? When I was younger, I didn't. I vote for what's the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I didn't really understand politics. I didn't really read on it. I Whatever I saw, whatever I read in the newspaper, in a magazine, is kind of where I was like, no shit. That's how shit goes down. Oh, okay, and you didn't that's have kids up. and you weren't married. I didn't married. have kids. I wasn't married. It really. I mean, I was paying taxes, obviously. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Never escaping that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it was like, okay, I get all that. But I think this year was the first year that I can honestly say, and I know people are going to talk shit about this, but I feel like I finally, I made an educated vote this year. <laughs> hey. <laughs> like, I literally did my homework this time versus before I, I went with what the media, and, and I and the problem is, is that the media has painted this orange man as if he's a bad guy. But if you really look at what he's done, if you really look at what he's done in these four years what versus this through? man. That's too, right? Huh? What, what he's, he's had, had to go, go through. through. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole. No, how, how, how dare you have empathy for orange man Hitler? And I'm sorry. I really like. Here's the thing, too. This man is a businessman. So he's going to get business done. Yeah. Okay. Biden is a politician. It's about years. 47 years. It's about like who I'm going to like Talk cheat, fly. who I'm going to like Talk fuck over, who I'm going to be cool with. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. You see what I'm saying? That I didn't understand that before. Yeah. Is that not awful that at 39, I'm barely understanding politics? I mean, we all, nah. took, we all took government I mean, and eco in high school. Yeah, yeah but it, a lot of us slept through it, though. Yeah. Well, because I took it in, in, in summer school because I wanted to be ahead. So I only had to take <laughs> government in, in high school. Nice. So, and going back to Kamala. Is it Kamala or Kamala? Kamala. Kamala. Okay. Kamala. Kamala. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> I say both ways, too. Okay. So, going back to her, when I would, you know, I, I, I follow so many, like, women businesses, and everybody was posting, um, and I'm about to get shit for this, and I know it. Everybody was posting, what a, finally, a female, a black female. Now I know, female. Anything now I know is anything's possible. possible. Whoa, whoa, Shame whoa. Shame on your mom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shame, Shame on, on your mom. mom. Why, if you, if you are a child of an immigrant and it takes for a black in, what is she? Indian, uh, Indian American. American. Indian and yeah. Like red dot Indian. Red dot. Okay. Uh, um, and Jamaican. Jamaican. It sounds woman. like you like empathy for foreigners with that comment, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right. I'm Mexican as fuck guys. Don't let the act non-accent fool you. Right. And so my thing with that is, is if your mom wasn't the person who showed you that ev- anything is possible in this world? If you come from an immigrant mother, if you're if that person didn't show you well, that anything, she's not an immigrant. Po- yeah, she you you have got to find a better applauding female out there. Like, why are you applauding this female? It's and the media. she slept her way up to the top. So you're okay with that too? Okay, the cool. Yeah. Then uh, then you know what I'm saying. They, then then go up the yeah. ladder that way. And that's the reason why a lot of women, instead of just being Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I'm a female and you don't like, you don't have to sleep with someone to get to the top. Uh, Willie Brown was his name. We're going. And he you was married at the time. We're okay. Going. So you don't have to sleep around to get to the top. If you are a smart female and you speak up and you say what you're going to do. Right into the camera, my soul. Tell him. I mean, Tell you know, him. if we lived in a world where things are really based off of merit and not off of, uh, you know, affirmative action all the time and, and identity politics. And, por eso estamos como estamos. and, you know, it's also about us women speaking up from the get go. 
you shouldn't be putting up with shit from the, you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't tolerate shit just because you're afraid to let go. You know what? You need to be the one that speaks up and makes the change then. Because I'm not going to say where I worked at before I graduated um, high school, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, high school. Before I graduated college where I was working. Thank you. From the get go. So I started there and they were paying people $13 an hour. Mm-hmm. My last job, I was making 15. So why would I go to 13? Yeah. Okay. That's so, at the time. That's at the time. So I said, mm, yeah, I'm going to have to pass on your job because I'm not taking 13 50 an hour. I have the skills. I am bilingual and I am asking for 15. So no less than 15. So either we go with the 15 or I just go find another job. That's all it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you negotiated so, so better, I negotiated than most males. better than most males. <laughs> Because I know a male that was there that when he found out what I was making, he went to HR and cried about it. Salty, but hurt. Because mm. of that, right? So beta shit. So exactly. the, the moral of the story is this narrative that supposedly the idea and if y'all fact check me, all right? Because I'm not gonna die on this hill because I don't know enough about it. But I've heard that the narrative that women are extremely oppressed. And it's that's the reason why they make uh, what is it like seventy five cents per do- of the dollar or whatever. Right. Like don't get ma- they don't make as much as male counterparts. From what I've heard, a lot of that has been deduced to it's because they don't ne- know how to negotiate as well, and that's really what skews the numbers. So it might be a cultural thing of where maybe males just are more assertive, uh, which is now. Being ass- assertiveness is now being considered a negative thing. Yeah, it, it's being taught in these uh, critical race theories that classes that re-education camps that they're doing for people in these business in these big corporations like the tire people that have um, a lot of Chinese influence that they got in trouble. Um, but anyway, they're teaching folks that there's a little thing where it's like these are white values like personal accountability, working hard. Uh, you know, shit like that, being on time, like all this type of shit where it's like, no, these are just things that as a fucking human, you know, stop putting it all on the white man. Like when I get up out of bed and I wake up, I'm not obsessed and worrying about the white man's holding me down. That's it. But I see some of these comments on my Twitter and stuff and people really live in that world. Oh, yeah. Um, and and sh- sh- bleh, switch subjects real quick. Anybody that's tuning in from California. Please let us know in the comments. Chime in. What is the vibe like out there in terms of the lockdown? How do people feel about Governor Newsom? I think this is his second term, so he's not up for re-election, if I'm I'm not not mistaken. Uh, But if he is up for re-election, are y'all going to let him get re-elected? Are y'all happy with the job he's doing? Uh, Do y'all ever sit and compare what other states, how how open and free they are? Uh, I posted the, the, the meme of the Cash Me Outside. And everyone's like, that's why y'all's Texans, yeah, y'all have fucking cases hasta la madre, and that's why y'all are, you know, they're hiding the bodies but in Texas. so do they, and they've had, a, I don't know, how, this lockdown for I don't know how long. Their numbers yeah. are high as fuck, too. They keep saying flatten the curve and just 14 more days, and as long as the hospitals don't overflow. And I will say this. Uh, today is what, November uh, 20th? 20th? Today is Friday, November 20th. Yes, I still respect COVID as a thing, and I know it's real and all that, and I don't want to catch it, but I'm a whole lot less afraid of it than I was, let's just say, in May, only because, you know, you see all the misinformation and disinformation, and they showing you these fake pictures of the body bags, and you seeing these fake crisis actor nurses. And uh, you see uh, fake death certificates getting put uh, COVID when it wasn't COVID. I know firsthand somebody in my family, they were trying to do that, too. Damn. Yeah, because well, the, well, they were trying to get money yeah, for the hospital. A lot of people don't so know they that. were gonna label it COVID and it wasn't COVID and had my aunt not caught it. Guess what? It was gonna be a COVID. It was death. gonna be a COVID death certificate. Another, another tick on that CNN board. <laughs> well, the CNN banner, they I don't know if they still have it up, but for the while for the longest, they had a, a counter at the top to show you to remind you that in Trump's presidency he has blood on his hands. And let's take a look at the death toll. And that little number would just be clicking, clicking, yeah. going up, going up. As visual persuasion, because remember, boys and girls, persuasion is all around us. You're being persuaded and you don't even know. That little banner is a visual persuasion tool, which is one of the 
because humans are so visual, the way we're wired, visual persuasion is some of the best persuasion there is. You know, that's why Trump said, build the wall. He didn't say we need more sensors and funding and, and a, a drone or maybe more, uh, 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 what do they call ICE? Uh, what do they call Border Patrol agents. No, he said the wall because it's visual. Right. So the CNN counter, supposedly after uh, the projected winner, President-elect Biden, they decided to remove the fucking banner because they were starting to shift the perception that it's no longer the Kukui. Biden has a plan, and these motherfuckers done solved it. And it's Trump. There is no such thing as president elect, though. That's we what's talked funny about to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got a green screen right there. I can call myself mayor elect. I can be fucking space force captain <laughs> elect. And where's this office that he's uh, making these right. calls from that I've His never basement? known about? Yeah, he's what? president of the basement. That's Versace hilarious. Mariachi drops Black Friday. Hey. Here's an advanced copy. Uh, uh, I had to remember to give my wife a copy because she Thank wants you. to jam it. You know what I'm talking about? My Can't boy wait. Rob. Fuck my boy yeah. Rob got a copy. And uh, yeah, man. It, it, you know. I love I'm very the, proud dude, of the it. cover art. I love the art. The art's the great. Art is amazing. Yeah, it's well put together. Shout out to David Melgar and uh, the homie Frank from Art Manifested. Uh, we got GT Gars on there. Cristal Poppin. Uh, that boy T. Rest in peace, Fifth Floor Weeby. We got Pitbull on there. Up and coming artist, Racheton Salvadoreño, represent LA. We got Dirtbag on there. Uh, I made a beat on there. Eric Jaimez made beats. All Day Ray. Uh, my boy Zeus made some tracks. My boy Midnight did the intro. Uh, we already dropped one music video for Cubal. We shot it, recorded it, everything in El Paso. My boy Nico Loss is on there. Beat King. Shout out to Beat King. Shout out to Fade Dog from San Antonio. Uh, we're dropping this Black Friday, man. You, you're going to be able to get some bundles like hoodie and a CD, shirt and a CD, uh, things like that. Chingobling.com, Black Friday. I love it, man. Um, we didn't even talk about, and we haven't yet, and maybe this is obviously its own um, episode, just the vote fraud, discrepancies, irregularities, whatever you want to call them. Have you guys been keeping oh, up? Man, it? wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> when I was watching, I hadn't when asked Kay, uh, uh, what's her name, Kaylee McEnany, yeah. whenever she was talking about the fraud and fucking Fox News, I thought I was, oh, I really man. thought... It's over. I was shocked. The world's over. I was like, did he just cut it off? Oh, we don't have... Who the F are you to be deciding if you're going to show this to all the Americans who want to hear it? What do you say? Is like you a good conscience. Oh, I can't show uh, you. Yeah, I can't show this. I don't know. She she can't go based... Uh, she Basically, she has no proof. Well, that's because you didn't let her tell yeah. everybody what her proof was. 15 seconds later. She show, and that's actually the scarier part of when media starts to censor what news they're going to choose to show because it may or may not be... Yeah, if they decide that you don't need to know that the Biden family's under investigation for money laundering and uh, peddling influence, if they just decide that you don't need to see that, they put it away. Meanwhile, they're showing you Trump's taxes and, and making up a whole bunch of shit. And then you got all the sheep attacking people like me because CNN, John Leguizamo, you know what I'm saying? Hey. Evelyn Goria, George Lopez, Jorge Ramos, and Univision all said this motherfucker won. And let me just make this point before I hand the mics back over. Um, this is what the left does. This is what CNN, this is what the mainstream media does. Uh, Trump's team will argue there are many cases of voter fraud, you know, when it comes to Dominion software, which was used in the Venezuelan quote unquote election, when they also had two presidents at once. Um, there's so many different cases and affidavits and, and accusations and, uh, a lot of 95% of it might not be real. But this is what the mainstream media does. They'll put out a headline that says, no widespread uh, voter fraud found. Well, hold on, bro. Didn't nobody say widespread? We're just trying to see if whatever corruption there was, was it enough to tip the election? Or did this people cheat, but it wasn't really enough? Like Biden still, you know, let's just pretend Biden was still in the And lead. I'm okay with that, if that yeah. is the truth. Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. You see what I'm saying? If yeah. that is the truth, I am okay with Biden being the winner, if mm -hmm. it is true. But did you catch the trick in there? Yeah. Did you catch the trick, which is, hey, we are in the process of looking into different types of voter fraud, right? We're, we're looking into it. The left, uh, the way the left does a little persuasion magic trick, a little sleight of hand, look over here while I do this, what they're doing is they'll literally come out and be like, we looked and we didn't find any. It's like, oh, hold on. Well, where did you look? Or they'll say, 
No evidence of widespread voter. Well, did nobody say widespread? You just can't throw it all out. Like we, you're telling me these affidavits and this witness and this doesn't corroborate. You're telling me none of this has any value. There, no widespread. Nothing <laughs> to see here. Look away. Dude, and those are the nuts. tricks. That's the tricks that they do. Where the headline, or they'll say, they'll say this. Um. Well, we asked the council of voter blah, 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 if they found, and they're like, no, as the council of voter, whatever, whatever, we didn't find. It's like me saying, it's like, it's almost like, hey, Rob, is something wrong with the podcast? Hold on. Let me check the council of podcasts. And then Rob changes his hat and comes back out and says, we've consulted with Rob, the producer, and we didn't find anything wrong with our audio or headphones or wires or cameras. And Dude, do you guys remember the uh, the ballot dump that happened overnight in Michigan where he was leading by a large margin? And they said, we're going to stop counting. We'll resume at 9 a.m. And then mm-hmm. an hour later, Biden's up by like 170,000 or Magically. whatever. Mm-hmm. Magically, right? So this came out yesterday. And again, look up your own independent sources. You know, fact check the fuck out of us until you want. There were like uh, there's a couple of independent journalists that are looking into this as deep as the county clerks of Wayne County and the other districts within that Detroit, Michigan kind of areas. Right. There are sheets where it's just zero, zero, zero down the line for registered voters, as opposed to how many ballots were cast for basically Biden. Ninety nine or it was like 100 percent for him. And nobody's answering why that is. Why is it zero for registered voters? But you have six figures worth of you know, counts for this one. Nobody's answering the question. And, what is, oh, and more and more of this is going to come out as, the, you know, the, uh, December 8th creeps up and these lawsuits are still going and someone's going to have some fucking answers. Something's going to happen. And, and you know what? Yesterday I saw a video from, um, um I think, I'm not sure if he's... Take the, your L, bro. I hate, it's hate, over. That's I love about, that. I love people that. saying that. Yeah. So basically the guy from Lexit, what he kind of said was, as Americans, it doesn't matter who wins. Right. Right. But as Americans, we have the right to know if there was really, really some voter fraud happening so because we can, fix it. Yeah. we can fix it and it doesn't continue to happen in the future. Sure. Because exactly. we don't even know if this has happened in the past. Oh, yep. I'm sure it has. You tell so, somebody without any reasoning, they'll be like, no, just take your rail. It's not about and, that. And that's like, the thing whoa. that no one, everyone's just like, fuck you. Y'all are sore losers. You don't <laughs> understand. Like people at first were sending me DMs of things and I was just like, listen, I didn't, I, I don't think ever in in my life, do I remember talking to someone and being like, oh, so you're Republican? Yeah, right. Yeah, so we can't, it says a lot about you, So, because that's what I get told, right? Yeah. It says, it says a, lot a lot about, about you. you because you voted that way. Uh, so what do I like, What do I have to say about you because you voted like, the other way? Vo- uh, uh, obviously, I can't <laughs> assume that they voted for Antifa, suppression you know of saying? speech, yeah. like pro-China. You can't do that. Why yeah. is it? In 2020, we are going through this. No one ever was friends before based on political views. I know why. Though. I mean, I'm sure there's a few people out there that, yeah, probably didn't hang out with people. They don't have the same. But how boring of a world would we be it, if we all thought, yeah. like, you know, and acted the same way? The thing is, is this. When people were attacking me on DMs before, because of this, especially females, the thing is, is that I've never, ever posted anything negative about nothing. Yeah. I am about women empowerment encouraging women not through politics boo boo mm-hmm. and not through religion so don't come at me saying this and that because you weren't following me before that because you knew that I voted a certain way and I saw things a certain way does that make sense mm-hmm. you followed me because you <laughs> liked my personality and what I did and the the positivity that I posted and not one day did I skip posting positivity on my social media because I stand for it regardless of all the negative shit I got. I mean, I was everywhere, even males. I got so mad one day, I called a guy. I said, give me your number then. I'm going to call you up. And I called his little bitch ass. <laughs> and I said, what's up now? You on my social media arguing with me, little... <laughs> okay, all you right. You know what cunt, I was going to say? Beep. Little cunt. You, you arguing with me? Oh, because you, you can't get a hold of my husband? Oh, cause he won't, cause he blocked you. So you come on my page. I said, give me your number, you little bitch. I was like, you have all that. You have a lot of balls behind social media talking shit, but you don't say it in my face. Beta we man. are in California every fucking year. You ain't talk shit. So I want you to talk shit to me. Give me your fucking number. Drop your number. Drop your number. Finally, he gave me his number. I called his little stupid ass, and I hope he's watching this video, and I oh, hope he's listening to the podcast. Because guess what? If you're still watching and you're still listening and you hate us, 
thank you because you're still making the ratings go up. Hey. You're still making these uh, little numbers these go up. So Cash thank me you. Outside. How about that? So when I called him, I said, what's up? What you got to say now? What to do? Now, where's your man? I said, you on my page leaving shit, leaving a bunch of fucking filthy ass messages calling me a bitch. Okay. Calling me a bitch saying, I bet you if you took off all that fucking makeup, you aren't even pretty. Just talking all this shit. I said, that's all you have. Biden's that's all. That's your intellectual. That's all you have. I said, it says a lot about you. I said, I'm blocking your stupid ass. I said, and keep my number. I said, cause if you got not something else to say, call me up, bitch. And then, uh, and, uh, he didn't call me back, obviously. <laughs> oh, what? This, uh, this one Lee. little boy, I don't know who he was. See, somebody on Twitter, uh, Ooh, I did a lot of cussing right now. God, please forgive, please me. forgive me, Lord forgive Jesus. Us. And you know what? I use the cunt word sparingly, but some of y'all little boys is cunts. <laughs> so, uh, somebody on Twitter, I, I replied to somebody like, Hey man, we take all threats serious. I have a lot of friends, family, and associates that love me and my family very much. Um, you know, basically you might want to do a little bit more research about me. And, uh, somebody that I know is like, Chingo, what's going on? Like, this is not positive. And that's like, uh, check this out. You don't know what type of, uh, threats and stuff we're getting. Like they, they DM in my wife and stuff. So cut me some slack when you see me replying to people, because, you know, sometimes if they want to play a psychological game of Chingo, you need to watch your back. Nah, player, you also going to watch yours. <laughs> I'm not going to be the only one watching my back. Uh, so this one kid on Instagram, uh, he, he, I think we squashed it since then because I'm going to tell you the story. <laughs> so first he was like, yeah, puto, you're canceled out here in Illinois. Let me find out you in Chicago. Da, 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 da. I was like, okay, what part of Chicago? Where you at? I'm over here off 19th and uh, 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 Damon and this and that. I said, oh, okay, you in the heart of Pilsen. I said, you're over there off of Blue Island by, off by Raymond's Tacos, right? Uh, 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 man hey man we fuck with your dog holla at me man i'm a fan i said okay then you know what i'm saying do your research bro i got people out there i got plenty of people out there and you know it's like and if the threat is serious and it needs to be neutralized you know there's ways to go about about it you know we got second amendment stuff like that i'm gonna leave it alone you know <laughs> no, no is- weapon formed against me shall prosper you know i see you at church on sunday uh shout out to second baptist <laughs> Uh, Versace Mariachi drops Black Friday. So I remember this used to be a fun, upbeat type of motherfucking uh, podcast. But what Marisol was saying a minute ago, she's on Instagram right now scrolling. But she was saying how we're living in a year where how do we arrive at this point where people are really at each other's throats, like divided and judging, uh, uh, judging each other based off this, that and the third. My answer is we've given way too much power to the algorithm social media and mainstream news because they've fed a narrative to us via the algorithm and and fake headlines and clickbait because all the while they've made us more divided they've made more money Mm -hmm. so if biden really is the winner i'm gonna make a lot of money the next four years yeah because it's just gonna be gaff after gaff after gaff and i know people these little uh, leftist comic writers that all they do is uh, trace MSNBC headlines and draw, you know, Trump, orange man, bad, drinking bleach, Nazis good, blah, 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 blah. They ain't going to have shit to write about for four years. That's for sure. Uh, as, you, as you've as you noticed during this limbo of who's really the president, how many White Houses do we need to have now, how many basements, who's the president-elect. In this limbo, the mainstream news is so confused. All they used to do, like right now, they don't know what to do. Because it used to be, uh, whatever the fuck Trump said, we're not going to do any investigative journalism. We're not really going to dig into any issues. We're not really going to report stuff. All we're going to do is wait till Trump tweets some shit and just clown that and misinterpret it and cut out the context and just frame them and hoax them. And they weren't really doing their job. So right now, they're trying to figure out how to break up with Trump because they think he's out and they don't know what to do because they haven't been doing their job. They're just fucking confused like uh president elect biden is moving forward assembling but moving forward assembling his after team. that little incident uh because at the end of the day he did win he won because i allowed him to make me that angry to where i was mm-hmm. yelling at target because that's where on i called phone. him from on the phone <laughs> all three oh puss ass yeah boy. that's exactly what i was doing she's really mean to her husband and <laughs> that's really i was talking like to. talking shit i pulled over by the restroom and was like with her cart and with my cart 
And I was, t- you know, so I'm assuming because I went there. At she the end me. of the day, he he won because I allowed him to take up that much energy of yeah my day, and I was mad, and I was still mad afterwards. I wanted to see him so bad, like. I don't have a middle. That's my problem. I literally zero to a hundred. Hey, Anybody still knows how to box. I and wish jiu-jitsu. I kind of, I wish I really had a middle because I feel like I could probably control my emotions a little bit better, but I don't have a middle and I know that. And I know that. So that's also why sometimes I stay quiet before I speak because I'm trying to come, calm my little ass down so that I speak educated versus I dumb down like you. Does you, that yeah. make sense? You know how, yeah. you know how Tyson, Gets you know would would close the distance with yeah. an opponent like Bob Mighty Soka Bob and Weave. <laughs> she got them kicks. She played soccer. Her cardio game is pretty on point. So like I mean even though her reach might not be as good as yours, I mean she did teach boxing. She sparred with boys and it, so I mean play you know and, if and you I think was it's a called game. Chingo's Butch Wife. <laughs> Damn, they called you God, that too, baby. Shit. Jesus, I ain't yeah, know that one. So Butch Wife, you know. You look so disgusting with your muscles. I don't know who told you that was okay. I'm sorry that I'm healthy. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Less sorry that I go to the COVID. gym. My sorry bad. I'm <laughs> uh, but moving forward, I never allowed it. And so, seriously, I tell anybody who wants to send me negative comments is I literally am I'm, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God opens your eyes, and whether you see left or right, I don't care. But I want you to o- I want Him to open your eyes to see the truth, so that if so that it could help you really see whether the left is really lying to you or if they're really telling you the truth. So even though you you call me names, even though you talk all kind of shit about me, you know what I'm saying? I'm praying for you and I hope God touches your heart and I hope God tells you, you know what? She might have some truth there for you. You might just want to investigate it just a little bit, just yeah. a little bit, just open it, just kind of turn the page a little bit and sneak peek and see if maybe just a little bit, there's some truth into what they're saying. And if you don't find any truth in what I'm saying, then that's you, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't, you can't be mad at nobody for that, not agreeing with that's you. That's why it's so important for us to debunk these hoaxes, like the bleach one and the Nazis find people and all these, because I feel like we can never really have the discussion. We can never really, um, keep our options open like you know you have more options than just the democratic party like we don't have to give them a monopoly we don't always it's poor strategy to always vote one way even if you want to bluff and hold your vote captive and be like i don't know democrats you're gonna have to give me because they promising you know females something uh the gay community something the black community something latino they promising everybody something so you can get all this diversity of votes but even if you got to bluff a little bit like we're never even going to get to that point if we can't at least debunk some of these hoaxes, maybe the next show, so that people could be like, all right, Chingo, now I'm going to listen to you, bro, because now you're telling me that he really didn't um, call Nazis fine people and he really didn't say drink bleach because nobody's that fucking stupid um, and so on. I feel like we can cover a lot of ground once we do that because then because some people... They're so closed minded, like we're not even on the same page. We don't even view the world through the same lens. Like people that attack us in the comments, they still believe the news. Yeah. I don't like we're not even on the same page. Like you're so closed minded that if you want to bounce, you're going to have to bounce because we're thinking abundance. We're thinking growth like we're first class citizens. We're not victims. We're not looking at the world through like it's the white man's fault. And I can't you know, I can't drink from the same water fountain. And it's 2020 and my vote don't count. And all this old. It's that dark winter versus prosperity kind of, you know, dark like, at the, yeah, during the last election. But you know, what's funny about this whole. Oh, that's white people shit. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to tell a story. I grew up in Spring Branch, right? What an aggravating term, by the way. That's what? some white people. shit. Yeah, I can't stand that, too. Um, Look at you over there studying. Like yeah, a white like a white boy. So, so funny thing is this. You're complimenting the white person because you're saying that they're better than you already as it is. Hello. Yeah. So you're saying you're not smart. You're saying that you don't have it going on. Regardless of how small or big 
the fact that you worked for it, boo boo, you should give yourself some credit. So why are you giving this white person credit just because they're doing better than you? Maybe instead you should be taking notes to see what that white person or whatever other race it is that you see is doing better than you and maybe implement it in your life so that someone else can say that about you and say, shit, what is that Mexican doing that I'm not doing because I need to get on that person's level? Yeah. Here's where I'm going with it. And I'll let you, I know this is Chingo's I'm podcast, not mine. Hold on. My, I hold just got to keep track of the stuff. I want. So Good. when I was going to, when I grew up, I went to a majority black and Latino junior high and high school, right? It was in high school when I realized I did not want to go to that high school because there was a lot of gangs. Uh, you know, there was a lot of like young pregnancies and so forth. And so I was like, wow. I happened to go to this event where there was all these white girls there and they had like the best training already. They, their school offered them. We were in the same school district though, Hmm. but that school was majority white, same school district, same school district. Further night, down. Night and day education. Night and day education. I didn't understand why. Mm. I was like, that's odd. What school do you go to? Made me curious. Oh, we go to Stratford High School. Word? Is that Spring Branch? Yeah. That's why we're here. And I felt dumb because I was like, oh, yeah, we are here because we're all from the same school district. Uh, duh. So I lied to my parents and said that um, I wanted to go to that school and that I was supposed to go to that school. Huh. And they were like, really? Aren't you supposed to go to Norfolk? Mm-mm. I'm not supposed to go there. I'm supposed to go over here. How are you going to get there? Well, I had a friend. I made a friend with someone. They'd come pick me up. And we'd go to sc- I'd go to school over there. That was my- allowed? I used someone else's address because my own school wouldn't give me the transfer because they need the money. They oh, need yeah. the funding. Who hasn't done that, you know? So I had yeah, to use- Can I use your address? Yeah, so it wasn't, use- it wasn't about what was best for you, the student. The minority, the one that supposedly the left cares about so much, it was more about their dollars and you taking up a seat, knowing that they were going to let you coast or and knowing that the education was an equal up the road. So if you really want to talk about systemic racism, it really comes down to that education. But we're too busy worrying about Jorge Ramos said, George Lopez said. And so then I remember I went to... um I, I went to my friend's house and she had an elevator in her house. I said, Dope. What? No one that I knew had an elevator in their house. You know what I'm saying? We were all middle class children. Uh, some of my friends probably didn't make. And, and second of all, I was teased in middle school. I would get harassed a lot because I wasn't part of a gang. Okay. Um, I was in this other program because I wasn't part of the regular school. Right. Uh, my parents drove nice cars but mind you no one asked me how my parents got those nice things right i still lived in an apartment complex i don't know how how that was cool you see what i'm saying but because i didn't want to be a gangster they wanted to call you a sellout they were basically calling me a sellout right my parents were strict you know what i'm saying my parents were on me they were none they they never checked my homework but they checked that report card there better not be a no fucking C or D on that report card, because guess what? I still got whooped. I got my last whooping in the 10th grade because I made a 73. Yeah, parents In the 10th grade. Card. 10th grade, bro, I was grown as fuck, and I was still getting a whooping in the 10th grade because I made a 73. And then, anyway, my point about that is that I realized that these people prepare for their children, and I don't think that us as Hispanics, we prepare for our children because we're such family oriented. Mm-hmm. So we worry more about family versus what's going to be in their future. Can I leave my child my house? Can I leave my child an education? I asked my dad when I was having to work full time and go to school full time. Dad, why didn't why didn't y'all like save up for me to go to school? He said, well, you know, we thought you graduate high school, want to start a family, get married. And I said, that's all you wanted for me? He's like, well, no, but you know, don't you want to have a family? I was like, no, <laughs> I don't. Not out of high school. I want an elevator in my house. I want, <laughs> damn. I said, you know, I was like, no, I don't want to have children out of high school. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get married out of high school. Second of all, I don't even know what's going on. And I'm 19 years old. So why would I want to, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? So when I saw that, I saw that I would ask like, oh, so how do you know how to do this? So, what? oh, I've been doing this since I was three years old. What? There's activities for kids with three years, three. Yeah. I'd see all their pictures. When I joined the drill team, 
um, there's a dedication page on the like on the um, program that they give you. And in the back, these girls were friends with their with the girl, you know, with my the other girls that were on the drill team since they were like four, five. They were in Girl Scouts together. They were in like little activities. And I'm not saying this is every Hispanic out there, but if you grew up in probably like in the hood and if you grew up probably with immigrant parents who were just hard workers all they mm. all they were trying to do was provide for you you were probably on your own a lot of the times the thing is i don't really know where my little brain came from because i knew from a small age that i didn't want the same things because my parents i would i had to take care of myself you know so my parents were at work. I take my little sister with me to this park in the back. It's called Freed Park. And we'd cross the street and I'd go be a part of the Girl Scouts. My parents had no idea. None. I, I signed myself up. That's and I take my Mexican sister. That's shit right there. And I would take my sister yeah. with me. We were little. I kid you not. I was nine. My sister was seven. I cannot imagine Penny crossing the fucking street right now at nine. You know what I'm saying? I'd be terrified. But my mom was at work. My dad was at work. They didn't get off till six. I needed to entertain my sister because I was babysitting her at nine. Mm-hmm. So I still needed her something to do so that when we came back, it was homework time. Then it was dinner time. And then my mom would come home nine. OK, so imagine that. So what I'm saying is, is as we as parents, regardless of how our financial ways are, if we could find just a little way to push our kids and not think that these are white things. Right. These are more. American things. We live in America. There's so much opportunity and there's so many free things out there that your children can be involved. Even if you don't have the money, you just have to look them up because that's what I had to do myself at nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. I was the one doing those things because my parents didn't speak English. I was the first person to learn English. So I had to figure it out. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if we just for one second, just stop looking at things as it's a white way, a black way, a this way, and just think about it. I don't want my kid to just, you know what I'm saying, be average. I want them to be better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's where it has to start. It needs to start with us at home as parents. Like, if your parents are immigrants, they're here to make your life better. So fucking do better. Do better. Do better better that's all it is it's not about if you're doing better than the white person the black person it's about just do better period so the whole idea of that's white people shit that's white people shit it's a cop-out it's it's um it's a fool's errand to to always look at shit like that why because there's poor white people too Mm -hmm. oh yeah there's a lot of poor white people and you know uh, it's just too simplistic to just be like, oh, it's the white man's fault. White people, this white. Well, it's easy for you to say because you white. You have privilege. Say that to the people in the Appalachians. You know what I'm saying? Appalachian Mountains, some of the some of the poorest counties in America, so on and so forth. Um, another thing is this: to to chime in and reinforce what Mighty Soul was saying about us focusing on education has to be a priority, and it can no longer be a cop out excuse of well, easy for you to say because you know it's white people shit. I'll give you an example. Some of the most successful uh, groups in America are immigrants. Indian Americans, Mm -hmm. Indian Americans, um, Asian Americans, Mm -hmm. mainly Indian Americans, Asian Americans. These are some of the highest paid, highest income, best jobs, best careers, best education. And it all starts at home, meaning these Indian parents ain't fucking around with their kids they're strict as fuck meanwhile rasa over here too busy arguing with chingo bling and marisol in the comment <laughs> section and blaming shit on white people all the goddamn time when it's your, it's the indian american who is coming over here they have a oh you know who else has a, a jewish folk oh yeah it's built into their culture to make education a priority just because you rasa and you over there trying to keep it real and you too busy being simplistic, going based off of, well, Edward James almost said we all need to vote like this. Or Eva Longoria said we need to vote like this. You know, because Trump said drink bleach and he's orange man Hitler. And, and, and that's white people shit. And it, it's, it's, the, it's the man's fault that, that we ain't got nothing cracking and we ain't got an elevator in our house. No. Tell that to Indian immigrants who are strict as fuck with their kids. Tell that to the Asian parents who know Hey, I'm not sending my kid to this school. They're going to that school. You know, tell that to, um, you know, Jewish families or, 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 
or anybody that understands the value of, look, the only way I'm going to give my kids an actual fighting chance to compete for jobs in, in the economy is I need to make sure they're educated as as, poss- as much as possible. My 12-year-old, now that she's going to this private church school because she was getting behind in them bullshit Zoom classes, <laughs> Paraline ISD, um, it's night and day. You could just see. Like, I, I literally, when I pulled up to drop her off, I lowered the window and I told the, the teachers and the ladies there, I was like, hey, I just want to say thank you. Y'all are doing a great job. Like, it's night and day. We see the contrast between her, the education she's getting now and what she was getting a few months ago down the road. And it's because you just see it in the homework. You see it in the amount of stuff, you like the church-based Bible stuff that she's learning, all the, like, you know, Christianity stuff she's learning, all that. Um, so my point is this. It's not so black and white as to, well, white people, white people this, white people that. Stop blaming everything on a white man, bro. It's 2020. Some of these people that argue with me on, on Twitter, you click on their bio, and they're still oppressed. They're still like, uh, they're they're like Chicanos, but they're hashtag BLM. They got their his, her, they, we pronouns oh, because that's the new normal, right? We all got to do that now. They're Latinx all of a sudden. Latinos are the most rebranded by other <laughs> oh people. Oh, my God. I mean, every couple years in a conference room, somebody raises a hand and be like, hey, shouldn't we incorpor- Shouldn't we update Latinos on their shit and make it more like anti-male, anti-Western patriarch, anti-Western civilization? Uh, sp- can we find a way to blame shit on the white man? All in their name. And then there's another thing called lat- Latine or some shit, which is like... We should break down pronouns Latine, in another episode. Latine or something. Latine. I don't know. But... Pues tú atinale porque yo no. Yo no, yo no <laughs> me puedo atinar. The fact of the matter is this. I'm going to just wrap it up like this. Um, basically, man, it's 2020. If you choose to look at the world through the eyes of someone that's oppressed and you want to play this game of oppressed Olympics and she's more oppressed than I am because... No, she's actually pretty fucking skilled and you know what i mean like she's always had good jobs her own career and making money and balling out of control and shit like that you know i'm an artist i do my thing too but it's too simplistic minded to always try to categorize things along the lines of gender and class and skin color tell that to an indian american because like it's like i thought dark skin made you oppressed not to indians their dark skin don't affect them for shit because they're on their little kid's ass. Bitch, you better read them books. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback off of that, um, when it comes to the Latin culture or, I mean, actually, there's a video I'm, I'm going to pull up next time. I, we'll do a whole, I want you guys to, if it's still up, it's so racist that I can't believe it's still on YouTube, but I can also still believe that it's on YouTube because oh, wow. they do whatever the fuck they want, right? It's basically a video where it's, uh, it sounds like a white person's asking just a group of black people, what are, what are whites more superior at? It's literally the title of the video. So if you want to listen to it between now and then, everybody, go look it up. If it's still uh, on YouTube, I'd be really surprised. And they're just asking black people, what are whites more superior at? And the answers that we get and that's still on YouTube will blow your fucking mind. And on, on top of that, Everything we're talking about in the comments, what's a big bummer is that all these other Mexicans are talking to Mexicans as if you couldn't relate, like if they're just a- like total aliens from another planet, right? All of a sudden, it's bad to be America first. I love Mexico. My Half of my family is from Mexico. I love other countries and other cultures. But when you're mad at somebody because it's America first for whatever reason, maybe blame it on Trump because he made America sound so great that everybody says, if you like America, you're all of a sudden a bad person. I don't want to see a flag. I don't want you to say that I'm American first and then Mexican. What are you talking about? I need some more flags. But wait a minute. The crazy thing is that Mexico doesn't consider us Mexicans. And second of all, you're not Mexican unless you were born in Mexico. Right, right. You're talking about all the Chicanos that are confused and they're we're stuck in the middle. Yeah, they're yeah. attacking people like you sure. or me or Marisol. That's like, um, we live in America. Like, come on, man. The first clips that that they took out of context when I was like, mm, I'm American. Yeah, man. People are like, Orale, I thought you were <laughs> Rasa and this, that, and the third. They probably are citizens. Yeah, attacking me for sure. And then when my Cuba music video came out, for such Mariachi, so good. Uh, coming out uh, Black, Black Friday. Friday. When the Cubo music video shot in El Paso, when that was uploaded to my YouTube, 
the, there's a Mexican flag on one of the vehicles and I'm rapping in front mm -hmm. of it and they're like, Orale, now you want to have Raza's back? Fuck that. Piche vendido, Malinche, Coconut, Tio Tom, ba 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 Basically like, I thought you were American. Take that flag down. It's like, man, y'all misinterpreted every single thing I've said every step of the way. You're mind reading. You're hearing what you want to hear. No matter what I post, you're thinking, he doesn't have empathy for people with COVID. He thinks COVID's a hoax. Ba 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 ba. That's why y'all got so many cases over there. It's like, bro, just enjoy. Or what did In they say? Uh, those Texans. Those Texans. They've always voted Republican. It's like, bro. Y'all voted for lockdowns. Enjoy your fucking curfew. I've never seen more people shit on Texas than all of a sudden. Like, everyone loves Texas. Like, no, everyone always knows. We're number knows. two hated. Did you know that? No. Man, all Vocal, number I've, two hated. No. All I, I know no is this. This is one thing I do know in case y'all don't know. The Texan flag is the only flag that could fly the same height as the U.S. flag because we were once our own. Republic. We were once our own republic. So a few years ago, there was a movement talking about Texas seceding. From the U.S. Because remember, y'all, our economy is great. Our unemployment is low. Um, you know, we got all the petroleum. So technically, we don't have to prop up the rest of the country. Like, you know, the coastal elites, you know, your New York and shit. They having some some problems over there uh -huh. with their d Democrat governor and their Democrat mayors. Um, but anyway. People I should. And there's a lot of educated people that are listening to the podcast. And we appreciate it because the podcast, guys, has uh, it, it, this is uh, it's a first full week. We recorded Monday. Wednesday and Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Only two episodes are up at the time we're recording this third one. The the downloads this week have literally quadrupled. Wow. I wanna see I wanna see the numbers. Just daily downloads, right? So and by the comments, you guys are having your own discussions in the comments. I mean, some of them are discussions, some of them are literally just hate wars. Uh but it's really good to see. And I was just gonna say, maybe go look into if you're not too familiar with the terms that the United States isn't because everybody talks about our democracy, our freedoms, right? We're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. And if you don't know what the differences are and why mm. that matters, you should really go investigate oh, that. Oh, man, you need to school me on that. So, we'll, yeah, we'll put a pin in that one that you guys can, like, why don't we all just vote and every person has their own vote? Why do we have an electoral college, for instance? You always say that doesn't count. It doesn't work. It doesn't matter. Well, go educate yourself on why we're a constitutional republic and not really a democracy. And why we, if, if that was the case, I'll leave it with this. The, the entire country would be ran by the biggest cities because those blue states have more people. Therefore, mm -hmm. more votes would come from mm -hmm. them. That's why we have electorates. And they be having the homeless people vote. And then they, yeah. I heard the Democrats are really good about busing people to where they need to have their votes. I wanted to look up, um, even though Texas didn't have an issue about votes, I really was curious to see if my dad, if you know how they said so many dead people uh, voted. Yeah, yeah. I'm really curious to look up to see if my dad's info was used. I think in Texas you can look it up. Yeah, I know. I want to. Yeah. And so I want to see if if my dad came up and if that came up, bro, I'm going to go ham on their <laughs> social media about it. If it did happen. Yeah. If it didn't happen, that's fine. But I'm sure. just saying if it did happen, I'm about to go ham on hey, some but, shit. But then they're going to see. But there was no widespread uh, voter fraud. It's like, okay, well, that's not what we said. Yeah. We just said that, hey, everybody, I think it's been a while. It's like, if America is the baddest bitch, and a lot of our voting is based on software, a lot of this software was developed by other people in other countries, and different people have their hands on the lever. Wouldn't you assume that people have at least tried to cheat? Especially if you think Orange Man is Hitler. I mean, if I thought he was Hitler... I would do everything in my power to cheat because who doesn't want the Nazis out of office? Again, that's the world we're living in. The mainstream media perpetuated this narrative that this man is orange man bad and you should punch a Nazi in the face and we're going to keep a list. Ho ass motherfucker, bitch, put me on your list, ho. Talking about we're going to keep a list of people. Yeah, we're going to move on and heal and unite, but we're also going to remember. Fuck you. Dude, you're you seeing you're seeing Democrats and now out people, doxing people on social media like officials, election officials, putting out people's putting info. out info so that they would certify their votes in their in their counties. Like that's what they're resorting to right now. Like and as we speak, Rob, I, I I haven't been watching anything lately because I've just been over it. It's like I am not gonna. I'm just not anymore. Yeah. It's like. This is over. I think I told you we talked about this on DM when you sent me. I forgot what you sent me. And I was just like people's blood pressure. I can't <laughs> oh, anymore. You did, you did. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. anymore. It's just like, guys, no one. I, I guarantee you half of these people never even cared about politics prior to this. For you sure. know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, 
I saw this video. It was uh, we were Penny was in the room. We were watching uh, her cartoons, and then the next video that played, I don't know why, was some BLM, um, I guess, groups attacking Trump supporters. Oh yeah, <sighs> just little innocent people with their Trump hats walking, not fucking with nobody, bro. One lady had a kit on her shoulder walking, and these people were just coming off and like hitting the hats. Those Trump supporters, not one man. They got they got a good Trump supporter because man, we would have been fighting, and I would have <laughs> been that person on the on the news who would have been like, "See, look Trump at her supporters, ground, look at her ground and pound." Yeah, game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So it it made me so sad to see I hear you. Americans. I hear you. I'm not even talking about the group or who you're voting for. Just in general, Americans yeah. fighting each other like that makes no effing sense in one of the greatest countries in the world. You, Why is that happening? You know this whole. Red Pill Tamales uh, series and this um, discussion about politics and all that. I think one of the beautiful things that's going to come out of it, and I'm speaking for y'all, everyone sure. in this room, is that I feel that whether on Rob's individual podcast projects or, or whatever Mighty Soil has planned down the pipeline, I feel that we're like minded in the sense that we would like to shift some of our cultural beliefs in terms of. Feeling like a victim, blaming the white man, um, putting more emphasis on you know how we are as Americans and 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 how we operate in terms of knowing the importance of what school district is your kid in. Are you aware of what they're teaching them in in the schools and is it challenging enough? It, it, you know, are, you're competing for jobs against the Asian Americans, the Indian Americans, the Jewish Amer everybody else that you're so called. You know, it's but it's all the white man's fault. So my point is is I think moving forward, whether this becomes a series or its own podcast, I feel like it, it, it's probably going to be one of my missions to make sure that our culture doesn't go astray. And what I mean by culture is this. If you look at hip-hop culture, I kind of no longer vibe with a lot of it, right? I came up on Jeezy, Gucci Man. I mean, I enjoy Cardi B and stuff like that. But when you look at the nihilism, right? The absence of God, just no value for life. When you look at like the amount of uh, drive-bys in Southside Chicago and just all this negativity and, and, and even like some of the people that are, orale, say you're cancel, homie, you're green light, homie, when you come over here. It's like, you know what? I've already outgrown that. I've already, I, I'm, I'm, what's the word? Ever since I've, I've been in stand-up <clears throat> comedy for six years, I really ain't even been in the rap game. I ain't been having that little competitive bullshit rat race i've been out of that i've been super happy touring doing stand-up there's you know i don't give a fuck so does, am i making sense basically yeah. i want to encourage people and educate people anyone that's like-minded that's on the same page of get your money right make sure your family's straight be proud of, of what you have going on and we have new principles moving forward we're no longer at the kids table uh, uh, regurgitating what Univision tells us. And we're not just going to take what Eva Longoria or Jorge Ramos tells us without doing our own fucking fact check. And checking. it doesn't matter which way you vote. It doesn't make you more or less Latino yeah. or Hispanic no. or Chicano, whatever you want to identify with. Latinx, Latina, Latine. It doesn't make us... I mean, they might change it for us next year. Anyway. I mean, I'm just saying, it doesn't. politics doesn't make us any less or more. So that's kind of what frustrates me when people say you're a sellout. What makes you more Mexican than me? My accent. I'm just curious. I'm just kidding. Huh? I go my accent. Right? I mean, that's, <clears throat> I don't, I mean, as you it is, be, I get clown because I, mean, I sound super, what do they say? I sound super Texan or whatever. En español, lo, lo demás en español. No, you're going to be hard pressed trying to out Mexican, Marisol. <laughs> I'm not as Mexican. That's, Mex that's I'm for not sure. as Mexican. That's so Mexican. I'm not as Mexican as Marisol. So that's true. I don't really know what that means. No, this Chingo. is this is what I this is what I mean. What I mean is it's a cop out. It it's a child's table uh, argument to always view the world like this. Orale, how dare you vote like that? Sell out? Well, hold on. Who? If I wanted to sell out, I would have cashed in like everybody else on the left. I would have got if I wanted pats on the back. I'd have been like, go Biden. I'd have fit right in. <laughs> yeah. I would have gotten zero death threats. Everybody would have been like, orale, 
finally somebody's you know what chingo you're a good comedian homie because you're speaking out for la raza and you're doing the right thing thank you for getting involved in politics but the minute i say hey man the, the mainstream media is they're kind of sugarcoat and they leaving stuff out and it really ain't like that he really didn't say drink bleach orale you fucking vendido coconut brown on the outside white on the inside uh we're gonna green light you and don't come to this city and woo de woo it's like i want to help shift the values that we have in our community in other words but also come help them understand or maybe maybe also because it's so political you need to also make it make it known that you're not trying to sway anybody to vote no, anyway not at all i mean because the- i think a lot of times what happens is not you other people misinterpret right or other um channels of social media that like to post you and then uh, you know uh yeah they'll do a whole hour based on a misinterpretation exactly so what i what i'm saying is no one is trying to convince you to i vote mean elections anyway. are over exactly so no one's trying to convince you to be anyway however i think probably what you should say is maybe instead approach it as these are my reasons why this year for the first time in my life i decided to go this way because I've always been this way. <laughs> and I think people's approach would be probably a little bit different. I mean, I've already like- said that they don't care about that, but look, this is what I want to say. Ready? Mm-hmm. You're telling me that it's too political. All right. Right now, moving forward, what I'm about to say has zero to do with politics. Let me make that clear. What I'm about to say ain't got shit to do with politics. So remove that for the next minute. All right. Moving forward. I would like to be an aid in helping shift the the way of thinking in our cultural values in terms of blaming a white man for everything, feeling like you're oppressed, looking at everything through the eyes of a victim, um, you know, putting more emphasis on real shit, not just with the new, I'm just keep it away from politics. But in other words, I would like for moving forward five years from now, 10 years from now, for people to be like, man, Uh, The Latino community has come a long way. We're not only saying, wow, look at how well Asian Americans are doing. Wow, look at how well Indian Americans are doing. It's going to be like, look at the emphasis on education that Latinos now have. And they look into shit and they keep an open mind. And I'm going to keep away from voting and politics. But I just mean in terms of values, reminding ourselves, family, What's important, real shit, like your kids and their education, not, does that make sense? I'm not trying to make it political at all. I'm just saying that there's certain things of certain subcultures within our culture to where it's more keeping it real to do bad. It's keeping it real to be poor. It's keeping it real to struggle. It's keeping it real to not study. Don't do your homework. Be dumb. It's keeping it real if you just blame the white man for everything. And it's kind of saying what a lot of the comments that I've been reading too, the positive ones were like, Chingo, thanks man for coming out and doing this and talking about it and taking the arrows and being a trailblazer because that's kind of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you just described. That's cool. If I wanted to be a follower, if I wanted safety in numbers, I'd be right over there with George Lopez. Or somebody said that uh, the, the Trump administration paid you. I was like, what? What? Where's that Hollow, check? Where's Shit, that at, right? I didn't see that check. That's in the other LLC. I mean, <laughs> that's how you know people have weak arguments when the only thing they could do is assume that you voted because of taxes. They assume you care more about the economy than you care your own people. They they just assume that you voted that way because of what 50 Cent said and and, and somebody paid you. No, man. If I wanted to be have safety in numbers, I'd be over there with Eva Longoria waving a Biden flag, you know, basically saying orange man bad you heard that rasa chingo bling here did not do his research and he wants to sugarcoat chingo bling wants to have a successful career and he ain't finna rock the boat <clears throat> he's not gonna mention nothing well, also baby okay so, so i totally get what you're saying and i 100 percent agree um i think if our mindset totally changed i think we'd view things a little bit different right so that has a lot to do with it but also from the fans' point of view, you went from making shirts that said, uh, or koozies that said, fuck Donald Trump, right? So, and then all of a sudden, they see you saying that you voted for Trump. So, you know, it's almost like, wait, what happened there? And if if I were to see that as a fan, I would have been more curious versus pissed. You right? would have. Me, me, yeah. me, as an individual. And I'm not saying that because everybody's going to say, of course you're saying that because it's your husband. 
No, but you guys don't understand that I, I am and it will always be. But before meeting Chingo, I was I am a Chingo Bling fan. So I loved everything that he stood for and everything that he was. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And why I'm saying that in the past is because it was also a different individual. We all mature. We all grow. We all evolve. And that is a great thing to do, guys. Evolving is great. We should all evolve. Can you imagine if we all stayed the 20 something year old person that you were shit. I'd be a fuck up right now. You know what I'm <laughs> well, saying? I'd still be wearing a cowboy hat 24 seven or I'd a grill. I'd still have a grill on 24 seven. I mean, people don't even understand the, the jujitsu Houdini wiggle <laughs> yeah. that I had to do year after year. Like the cap that you're wearing right now, it was rebellious for me to put that on yeah. only because it's like, wait, you're not going to, you're not going to bring out Chingo is Chingo not, but, that's where all your value is. People like the hat. You're weird. Right. We like you only because the boots and the hat. So I've I've fought every step of the way to just be free. You know what I'm saying? So this is a blessing in disguise. I've been needing to rebrand anyway. I might drop an album called Pedro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like Fifty Cent did Curtis. Oh, um, dude, someone was talking shit about that. Like they went like a long deep. Like who changes their name from Pedro to Pete? Huh? How white is that shit? Like what? I mean, when did I even say my name is Pete? I don't know. Maybe because they've heard me call you that and or maybe but 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 going back to what you're what you're saying right now, Pete. (laughs) (laughs) Pete. Yeah. Um, going back to what you're saying is also um a lot of people were uh, some of the comments that I met that I've read on uh on the What Did He Said podcast uh, account was you should have done like Kim Kardashian and kept your mouth shut. Versus that bitch put a blue heart on Twitter. I know, but she didn't vote that way, bro. Oh, no, of course not. She She's getting too much. She's making, she's freeing so many people under the Trump administration, and she damn well knows it. But she's going to, she's not going to lose no. her following because she depends on it. So I get it, right? So what I'm saying is people were saying you should have kept your mouth. This person in particular said you should have kept your mouth shut and voted for whoever you wanted to. You didn't need to put it out there. But wait a minute. Aren't we in I'm America? Leader. I'm a leader. Yeah. I'm so a leader. So we can't voice what we want? Yeah. We can't. It's not freedom of well, speech? Y- you exactly. Have to, you have to take this into consideration. So the most polarizing, most hated man where half of the country thinks he's Hitler. Because the mainstream media is very irresponsible. They have a they have a dog in the fight. They're biased. They hide shit. They cover for Biden with one hand while they throw shit on Trump with the other. And I know Trump I am not a I'm very careful about labeling myself conservative. Sure. Labeling myself Republican. Yeah, exactly. Labeling yeah. myself Trump supporter. I don't even I don't wear the red hat because I'm not a cheerleader. Mm-hmm. So whatever your stereotypes and assumptions are. It ain't got shit to do with that. It's it. There's a whole bunch of reasons, and that's why we're doing a 12, 12 part series, and we've been on longer than two hours because it's nuanced. If I was just a sucker, if I didn't really care about y'all, then I would have just shut the fuck up, suppressed my voice, kept it to myself, and don't and don't share no game. But I I'm not a follower. I'm I don't look for safety in numbers. I stick my neck out every step of the way so the realest shit i could ever do for my conscience is to kind of give some game and be like hey y'all it ain't so black and white it's a nuance we should probably open up this discussion and like the from the first episode i said we've been told by our latino leaders that we need to vote one way all the time forever that gives us zero leverage it's not a very diversified strategy of options it's actually a poor strategy I would argue that we really haven't advanced a whole, whole lot doing what Latino Hollywood has been telling us to do. So I felt like I'm going to go up against the establishment. I'm going to go up against the status quo. You can choose to look at it like David and Goliath because I'm literally sticking my neck out, but not on behalf of the most hated man, but the most hated man going up against what? CNN, MSNBC, Eva Longoria. You know what I'm saying? Big tech, Twitter, Facebook, uh, everything. Parlor at Chingo Bling One, and, st- <laughs> and still didn't lose nothing. Yeah, I ain't lose nothing. All I've done is gained. So that's it. Cause you're in America. You heard me. This is the best country in the world. That's and I'm glad that my parents came here. 
And uh, you know, another thing we should talk about, and I'm, I'm literally, I'm ending it. I'm okay. not talking anymore. All right. Another thing we should consider educating people is is comparing what the Democrats' plan is for things like public health moving forward, and how does that compare to Mexico's current public health system, which is they'll come to your door. ¿Cuáles vacunas le falta, oiga? They're giving you the vaccines, whether you want them or not. Um, if you're over a certain age and you're female, that's it, hysterectomy, you ain't having no more kids. Um, what else? Like if somebody has Down syndrome, if they well, have a the kid with Down syndrome. Well, the reason they, um, I guess they do a hysterectomy is because if you're past 35, you know how they say there's a risk of you having a, you know, you not always, but you know. Yeah. Uh, your child could be Down syndrome or a- any type of disability or whatever. Um, and so they basically, I guess, don't want to have any disabled children. Yeah. I don't know. So that stuff's already being pushed in other countries as far as like mandatory vaccines. And, and that eventually people will push. I thought in that. New York it happened already or something Ooh. like that. If I, I'm not I mistaken. I don't somebody could so. fact check us. Maybe yeah. we'll have an expert on. But uh, according to what I've seen. And again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, and I'm sure someone's going to leave in the comments. Why are we even listening to this fucking pendejo? He said it himself. He's not an expert. <laughs> but supposedly New but York... they're still watching. <laughs> yeah, supposedly New York passed a law through the bar which basically states that you can't use religious uh, beliefs as an excuse to opt out of a vaccine mandate. mandate. So supposedly uh, it went through... And when the vaccine is available, it's mandatory for everybody in New York, regardless of your religious beliefs and shit like that. But I I just want us to compare and look at Mexico's current public health system or their situation. How does it contrast with our current system? Do you prefer that type of life and that type of setup with the government all coming to your house? Or do you prefer what we have here now? And do the Democrats want to shift us towards what they have down there? That's the, I think that's a very important. And I think speaking about healthcare in general might be a good topic because that's what a lot of people argue, right? Oh yeah. But I'm sorry guys. Um, you know, when you're self-employed, you have to get private insurance and, um, the Obamacare for someone who is self-employed it's over a thousand dollars for a family of four unless you have to make less than i think thirty five thousand in order to qualify to get like the really good rates so at one point we were almost paying two thousand dollars um i had to find another insurance provider because our i was paying a house note for for health insurance but that's for its own episode for sure yeah exactly yeah and yeah so Speaking of the healthcare, socialized medicine sounds cool because they're like it has a cool name, like oh Obamacare, healthcare, yada yada yada. It sounds cool, but when you look at real examples of socialized medicine, the quality tends to go down. You end up waiting a long time for a simple procedure, so you end up wanting to just limp on that broken leg anyway. <laughs> and and maybe look at who Cuba. Who else has a socialized medicine? Canada, Cuba, Canada. So I'm sure it varies. But uh, something to think about. All right. Jingo, send them out. Let them right. know about the album. Yeah, for sure. Thank y'all for tuning in. It's another episode. This is episode three of Red Pill Tamales. Make sure y'all follow us on social media. The homie Joseph just showed up. We're going to knock out some TikToks and stuff for you guys. Uh, follow Marisol on social media. It's Marisol Herrera. Rob, tell them yours. At Rob GTV everywhere. Yeah, so if you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying Red Pill Tamales, if you want it to be its own thing, if you want more episodes, whatever, if you hate it, Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Is it helpful? Are there some subjects we're not digging deep enough about? Or maybe some subjects that you guys are curious about as to, so why does the Democrat do this? Or why does the Republican do this? Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's Mm -hmm. all about, let's take these 12 episodes and let's educate together. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And stop just kind of looking at sides for once and just take in this education and then you turn around and do your own research and your own reading to see if or fact checking Mm -hmm. right to see if this is something that okay wait a minute you know just allow some of this to kind of sink (laughs) in so that if you feel that same way it's like damn i never knew that 
But I don't agree with it. So, you yeah. So after you're doing your research, if you decide that you're pro big government, you're pro China, you're pro lockdown, you're pro taxes, you're pro neo Marxism, you're pro Antifa. If you decide all that, then continue to vote Democrat. But if you say, I don't really like Antifa. I don't really like China all up in our mix, stealing intellectual property, pumping us up with fentanyl. Then come on over to the dark side, baby. <laughs> if you like your guns and all that and you want to keep them, come on over to the dark side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and on that note, peace. Thank you, guys.